All right, welcome to Dre and Smiley, the Inner Circle Podcast. Dre, man, you know, I usually find podcast guests on the airplane when I'm flying, I, I meet people. I'm walking around Tampa, I'll meet some people. Or people will come to me, on I see them on LinkedIn. But I'm so excited to have Vanessa Riley on the show. And I'm going to read her bio in a moment. But I found her because I was walking on my Sunday walk and I went through the JW Mary, I got the free paper. And there was some sort of author event going on here in Tampa, St. Pete. And there was a listing of 10 to 15 authors from all over the place. And I wow. reached out to Vanessa and she responded. I was like, what? She responded. So <laughs> here we are, Dre. Awesome. And I'm like, so this is the first one I found from the paper. Don't respond. Like, like you don't. <laughs> Like, the other, the other ten that was the photograph. Next thing you did not respond. So, <laughs> but let me read this, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Riley is an award-winning author of Eileen Queen, a Good Morning America Buzz pick, and the forthcoming Queen of Exiles. Exiles. Riley's historical novels showcase the hidden histories of Black women and women of color, emphasizing strong sisterhood, and dazzling multicultural communities. Her work encompasses historical fiction, historical romance, and historical mystery, and have been reviewed by the Washington Post, Entertainment Weekly, NPR, Publisher Weekly, and the New York Times. Riley was named the 2023 Georgia Author of the Year Awards, Literary Fiction Winner for Sister Mother Warrior. Now, Dre, wow. I'm going to ask you a question, yeah. but this is the tip of the iceberg. I actually Googled her. No. She, has, she has three three master's degree, a PhD. A so PhD. This is, she does this. I mean, she's just. I'm a page now. But Vanessa is a phenomenal woman doing phenomenal things. And I'm just so glad that she's here. And Vanessa, thank you for being on the podcast. And mm. and. Tell us about you. Where did you find the time? Um, you know, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer that Lord opens doors and that he prepares every aspect of your life, whether the good or the bad or the beautiful, for your next step. And, mm. you know, I've been I, I think I try and be obedient and doors open and I went through them and for the most part it's been good. <laughs> oh. No, that's Cool. When I was researching you, I found something I wanted to ask you specifically about. You say mm -hmm. you like the focus between 1750 and 1830s. If you can, express or explain why you do that. And then tell us about Dorothy Kerwin Thomas, because you mentioned that in one of your YouTubes, but you just glossed over it. And I'm like, who is this fascinating lady? Okay. Okay. So um, I focus between 1750 to 1830s because those are the freedom years. Every Ooh. person in the world wants freedom. You've got those darn Americans who want to be free from Britain. You got the French Revolution. You have the Haitian Revolution. You've got, you know, within Catholicism, which is the dominant religion of the world, the the um, the different Capuchins hate the Franciscans. Hate um, there's one other there's one other Franciscan there's one other sect in there, but they're always fighting and trying to disprove that the way that you worship the Lord is the, it's a hot mess. And then you mm. go to the West Indies and every one of these colonized places is under rebellion, trying to be free. And no one in the world, even though they all want freedom, can understand why their brother wants freedom too. Mm. So to me, mm. it's a landscape of so many stories. There's so much hidden history so many different misconceptions, but from a root of everybody wanting actually the same thing. So mm -hmm. I love that time frame. Yeah, uh, so it makes perfect sense to me. And Dr. <laughs> Kerwin, uh, Kerwin okay, Thomas. So Dorothy, Dorothy Kerwin Thomas is a phenomenal woman. It's the story I, I never thought I was gonna get to write. Um, I found her, whenever you find anything, can you go with, Take a picture with your phone. You will never find it again. <laughs> I was doing research on something and I came across uh, a comic. Um, uh, no, it was a political cartoon. Um, the political cartoon shows a black woman, a dark skinned woman in a hammock with Prince William, um, who is 
the, I think he's the fourth son of Charlotte and George. He's the, he ends up, he will eventually become king, but at the time he's, he's just the, his name is Prince William. And the person who draws these, uh, car, these political cartoons, he tries to take down everybody. His name is Gilroy. He's very much a masochist. He's a sexist. He's a ist. You just put an ist next to this guy's name. He's <laughs> that. all the boxes, exactly. right? Um, and if he gets a chance to draw a woman, they're always ugly and homely and they're, you know, like they looking for a man at all, every street corner is, is horrible. He gets to draw a black woman. Oh, he don't spare any tropes. <laughs> so, you know, noses and behinds and all, and, and saying mm. mass are kind of cute, all kind of garbage, right? Mm. But this woman is drawn beautifully. Mm. The embrace is loving. So she's not the joke of the piece. She's the truth of the piece. So I knew she was a real woman and I determined I was trying to find who this woman was. And in this particular case, you've got to follow the rich white man. You follow the rich white man, the prince, Prince William. He is, um, at that point in time, he's, he's commanding frigates. He and his boys are going to every colony in the West Indies and they are partying hard at every stop. And he gets to Jamaica and they party so hard that they break a brothel. I don't even understand how you break a brothel. <laughs> hard they eating a brothel. To go and so he ends up paying, I mean, pays the next day for all the damage he and his boys do. But when he gets wow. to Dominica, now his boys, and you know, you fellas are, are fun. Cause see, y'all think we gossip. Y'all write your stuff down and send it back to your families. It's, and stuff like that. That's exactly a concept, right? <laughs> so he, his boys are telling on him and they say, oh, he's with that woman again. That Dorothy is a handsome woman. Um, and then another one writes, he's dancing with Dorothy Kerwin at the Mulatto Ball, which is in um, the uh, Rousseau, which is the capital of Dominica. So I had a full name and then I researched this woman and I realized she, in addition to just having this affair with a future king, she has bought her own freedom, bought the freedom of her family. She's built businesses across the West Indies. Um, mm. She becomes one of the wealthiest women in the West Indies. And mm. then there's a point where she saves generational wealth for women of color and black women in Guyana. Um, she literally, um, there's an unfair tax where the governor of Guyana says, hey, women, you, you women of color, you black women that's got money now, now they mad, right? They mad, even mm -hmm. though they used all the services that these women in restaurants and, and housekeeping, they used up all these services and paying all this coin. Now they mad that these women got this money, right? Mm -hmm. So they decide mm -hmm. every time there's a rebellion, you black women should have stopped the rebellion. Hold up. Wow. Mm -hmm. people, people jumping up and, and burning stuff, you think we gonna jump in the middle? That's not this. <laughs> But he right. did attacks on just the black women. And uh, Dorothy and her friends were smart enough to know that if you can make a law that just targets one sect of people, you can make a law to do anything. And most of these women had gotten their freedom by something called manumission, where they paid money, and now they have a, a legal document that says you're free. Well, if you can change laws, that can go away. So Dorothy mm -hmm. wasn't going to have it. So she ends up going from Demerara, which is below the equator, on a ship, she gets to um, to London, and she tries to get a meeting with Lord Baptist, who's over this the uh, uh, Secretary of War in the colonies. He won't take the meeting, won't take the meeting. So she ends up renting a carriage. Now this is like taking a stretch limo. She takes a carriage. Um, it's got six horses. It's the biggest carriage you could you could rent. Six horses, footmen, all this sort of. It takes up the entire street. She parks right in front of the man's office. He thinks it's a visiting queen. So he goes out, has his people go get her and everything. And then he finds out that she's not the queen, but then he realizes, well, this homie done spent a lot of effort to come visit with me. So he takes the meeting. He ends up firing that governor. Uh, wow. He sends the law. She goes back to Demerara Hero and literally is saving generational wealth because that tax mm -hmm. would, would end up robbing these women of that money because that's what they were the money is control and power and if you can use laws to target these women there's no telling what they could do so that's dorothy Kerwin thomas she literally should be in our history books 
I never thought I was going to write that. I'd done all this research, as you could tell. And then opportunity came up and I pitched and it happened. And I'm shocked. <laughs> I wrote the book and that, that one has been options. So hopefully we will see it on the, on, on the, on the, uh, as a, as a TV series uh, in the future. What's the title of that book? Island or what will it? Island, Island Queen. Queen. So Island. after you share what you just shared, I, I I feel compelled to say, Dr. Riley, my next question. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you were sharing the story, I felt like I was just drawn in deeper and deeper into this person, this real, not a character, but a real person, mm -hmm. um, which, which leads to my, my follow-up question, which is, in my research, I found a lot of your books are based on revealing the hidden his histories of black mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Your desire to um, pursue that, to write about that? I come from a line of strong black women, um, mm. but my father was very instrumental in this. My father's from Trinidad and Tobago, and mm. I was the only girl, and he would sit all his kids down and he'd tell us stories. He really just wanted us to go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but because I was the only girl in the house of three brothers, he would come up with these stories about these women leading rebellions and women doing interesting things. And as an adult and researcher, half of those were true. These have I found is documented truth. And uh, so he was a storyteller. Mom was very much into literature, and to, it's a perfect match. So you you know you get that literary bend, you get the rhythmic you know prose and whatnot. Um, I work very hard on my craft so that I can deliver the best story possible. And, and, and it's kind of, I blame my parents. It's their fault. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what's, what's interesting also in doing the research about you is that you were, you were a renowned author, but you're also a speaker. <laughs> and in my communication with you recently, you also serve as a consultant in many different ways. You were in Bulgaria. You may still be there. I'm Talk to me about that. Bulgaria. <laughs> Yeah, talk to me about that. And, and how many times have you Ooh. mentioned Bulgaria in the past 10 years as like a place I want to visit? I don't know. How does this, tell me, talk to me about that. This was not on my bingo card. You know, everybody got a bingo card of what's going to happen this right, year. Right. I thought yeah. I was just going to finish up the books that I'm writing this year, you know, go into next year. That's a plan, right? Um, yeah. They, um, so I am, what I'm at liberty to say at this moment in time, and so hopefully okay. you guys will Mm -hmm. I mean, when we're able to spill more, uh, of um, course, but a major <laughs> network is doing a diverse Regency film mm -hmm. and they wanted an expert to come in and to help them, you know, to, to look at the script, look at sets, look at, uh, you name it, fashion, hairstyles, um, to work with their, they're bringing in some of the, 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 the top tier designers um, top tier hair specialist, um, mm. but within this confines of let's see how historically accurate we can be with telling mm. the story, um, but also allow a little magic. So my purpose is to help everybody understand this is the lay of the land. This is this is how things were. This is uh, the way things looked. And so if we break rules, we, we're intentional. We understand why we're doing it. There's, there's a focal point. And like breaking rules, like um, let's say you wanted to have a different type of dress. Like for this time period, it's a column, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's really, you know, there's, um, it, it ties right under the, the bosom um, and goes straight, straight down. There are times where you might want to have an extremely long train, like for a wedding dress, or you might want to do something different. Um, some people just do something different without understanding why. Mm. My thing is let's let's be intentional. Let's um, if you're going to, you know, it, it, it's like some people. If y'all ever heard when some period pieces that just dress up, they just want to dress mm -hmm. up, no relevance yeah. to anything that's going on in the period. Right. Um, when you do something that has diversity in it, um, especially if you're modeling true diversity, you know the you know. Uh, because there were black millionaires during the Regency. Um, there, there, you know, one of my favorite stories, you know, I, I, I tell a lot of stories. So, um, was a black man that figured out that rich folks don't like to touch coal. 
So he literally drives all over the most exclusive, richest parts of London and Mayfair and hand delivers the coal for them. He makes oh, wow. big coin. He, right, he, he, right. His daughters marry well. He has a house. He builds on the Thames. I mean, he's set because wow. he figured out it. He figured out an opportunity and he capitalized on it. Right. But people don't know his name. Cesar Picton. Mm-hmm. He was a million, like I said, a millionaire during that time. There are so many stories of that are out of the norm um, that exist for our people, even though enslavement is happening in the United States or enslavement mm. is still happening in the West Indies. There are people mm. who were able to gain their freedom and did great things with that freedom. And mm. while all stories are important, sometimes I feel we spend a lot of time on one story and not enough on the others. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So as, as you share, and I realize you're limited into how much oh. you can share as it relates to yes. details. I'll, res- yes. I'll respect that. Yes. But as you described the the movie, mm-hmm. the storyline, mm-hmm. two, two shows come to mind. One is mm-hmm. Bridgerton. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other is The Gilded Age. Yes. This is not so, one of those projects. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> what, 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 what? Made me think about the Gilded Age is because you mentioned how sometimes there's liberties taken with the dress or things like that, but there's a reason behind it. Mm-hmm. And I was watching a behind the scenes of the Gilded Age. Have you seen that series? I've, I've seen pieces of it. It's beautiful. It's a, well, Absolutely, beautiful. it is. It really is. And there's an, uh, a black woman who plays the role of an educated um, woman whose family is also educated. But she ends up becoming a a secretary for a white family, right? Mm-hmm. Just by chance, a series of events. Mm-hmm. But she's treated with respect, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But she mentioned that in her deciding to do the role, one of the key things she wanted to make sure was highlighted is her success in terms of how she dresses, wearing makeup, mm-hmm. come, you know, puts well put together, et cetera, which may have been a little different from what actually happened during that time. But she wanted to make sure that that you know people realized that she had a level of success, that she was educated, and so there were some mo- some some you know modest adjustments to her her dress and things like that um, for the storyline. So that's that, that's just something that came to mind as, as you were yeah. sharing that. No, absolutely. It's you have to be. My point is be intentional. Um, if people should be able to take liberties, but take liberties from a foundation of I understand what the history is. I understand exactly. exactly where we are. And so if I'm doing this, it's because of this. And sometimes you have to, you're messaging certain things in, in what you're writing. Um, and the Gilded Age is beautiful. That actress is amazing. And for her to be in that show, those were her demands to be there. And mm. they wanted her in the show. So they accommodated her. And um, I think it's great seeing her in a role that's not a struggle role. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like yeah. that. So, yeah. so tell me this, with mm-hmm. from your research, what did you find during that period that absolutely surprised you or astonished you? And I'll give you an example. When Chris Rock had his last stand-up, and I, I've been, I'm in, I'm in Florida, I've been living in America all my life, but he said that his mother couldn't go to a regular dentist. They had to go to the veterinarians because Black folks couldn't go to doctors. And that was something that at 57 years of life, I've never heard that. And then I found out it's true. I'm like, wow. So on a positive side, like that story about the coal millionaire, that's fascinating. What was something that you found that just had you like, man, that really happened, whether it was positive or negative, to just flat, okay. just floored you. What was that? Well, we, when we go back to, the, to Dorothy's story, um, mm-hmm. To see a woman with that level of mobility and access, you typically, I mean, from all my research, that would typically be a mulatto or very light-skinned woman. Mm-hmm. Dorothy was a dark-skinned, beautiful, Lupita-like woman. Okay. And to see her mobility, um, that was very exciting to me. Because the thing is, we always find the one, you know there's more. <laughs> But to at least find that one. And so to to see Dorothy um, and to discover who she was, to me, that that was amazing because that's not the that's not what we are told. That's not how we're educated. That's not how we think. Um, and I love finding these exceptions because they're really not exceptions. They're just 
I firmly believe for every one you find, there's probably 10 that we don't mm. know about, uh, 10 or 100 that we don't know about. And so that was exciting for me. Um, the mobility or the, you know, when I started my career, you know, there are a lot of people saying, oh, black people weren't in the Regency. No. What, what, did we get a spaceship and just flew away and it came back back in 1865? Oh. Um, it just disappeared. You know, we just did, you know, we was kings and queens in Africa and then we got a spaceship and dropped back in 1865 just to be liberated. Yeah. Right, right, um, right, right. You know, that's, you know, craziness to me, craziness to me. But um, just, you know, there's just so many different stories. Um, you know, when, when I was doing... Uh, Queen of uh, Queen of Exiles, which came out this um, this well, actually, it was a System of the Warrior. The role women played um, in the liberation of Haiti is a story mm -hmm. that I think is is never told enough. Haiti is the only of all the all the islands are rebelling: Jamaica, and Trinidad, and and uh, Grenada. Everybody's having rebellions. The only successful one is Haiti. And Haiti is the only one where women are playing a significant role. Um, there's a Dahomey warrior talk called Grant Toya, who um, literally was a gal, one of the leaders in, you know, so if you saw the woman king over the, over the I think, last year, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the Agoges or, you know, when I was doing research, I, they were called Minos. Um, she was a leader of this. She gets captured, gets brought to Santa Domingue, and... At that point, I think she really realizes what enslavement means. And she has a plan. She's going to raise the children up. And one of the kids that she pours into is Jean-Jacques Desalines. Mm -hmm. She teaches him how to fight. She teaches him how to shoot guns. She teaches him how to move troops in the hills based on the star positions. Jean-Jacques Desalines is looked at as one of the world uh, like top strategists at that time frame. He didn't go to West Point. He gets it from Grand Toya. Um, you know, that aspect, it blows my mind. Um, and then American history books make Jean-Jacques Dessalines sound like a monster. Mm -hmm. When you go back and you actually see the, the history, you know, when he writes the Constitution, he makes everybody Black. Because at this point in time, you've got the colored, which is a different group. You got mm. the blacks who were the ones that just were liberated. You have the blancs. You got petite blancs, grand blancs, all these sorts of things. He just like wipes the slate and says, everybody black. Mm -hmm. We all starting from the same spot. Uh, mm. that, for, that foresight yeah. of a man that our history books want to paint as a, as a butcher wow. is amazing. You know, the, the, this, amazing. there's so much history. It's so many different things that just blow my mind. And I wish the world knew more of. But those are just some of my top ones. So, so tell me this, because looking, listening to you speak about the stories in your books, and then looking at your bio with the masters and the science and all this mathematical stuff, how do you divide up your day? Is it 12 hours you're a scientist and figuring out some mechanical engineer building a bridge? Or and then the other half, you're writing it? So, how do, you, how do you balance the two worlds, the two realms, for, which seem polar opposites? Yes. Yeah. For a long time, I had four jobs. So during the four. day, I was four. four jobs. So, you know, I'm, I'm half West Indian. What do you think? Yeah. I was going to say, he must be Caribbean. He yeah. must be Caribbean. She <laughs> said Trinidad, not Jamaican. So, much time, right? so during four the day, jobs. I was an engineer, and I, I work for General Motors. So if you know anybody who has a Cadillac that's quiet, you can thank mm -hmm. me. I, okay. I solved the issue with the high pressure, uh, high pressure uh, uh, turbine pump. Mm -hmm. Made sure it was quiet, so you know that, wow. that ride, that smooth ride. Is my yeah, okay. I worked okay. for NASA. I worked for telecom startups. I, I, that was so. That was my day job. Then I came home and I was mommy and wife. That's two, that's two separate jobs. That's yeah. two separate jobs for real. <laughs> that's, <three. laughs> that's two separate jobs for real. Yeah. yeah. Two good jobs. And then I'd yeah. put all them little suckers to bed and I would be from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. writing. Um, and that's wow. what I did until about two years ago. I'm now full-time writing. Uh, but wow. before that, you know, you just do what you got to do. Yeah. One, one thing that was fascinating is I saw one of your YouTubes where you said that the critics said, oh, 
she's not a good writer and you have to reject some letters. What do you tell to someone who's looking at you or listening to this and they're embarking on their writing passion and they got that third, 15th, 50th rejection letter? What do you say to that young person, male or female, trying to be what you're doing? Um, you have to listen to the vision. I think it, what happens is a lot of times we have a vision and we don't have a timeline on that vision. So we expect that vision comes on Monday that by Tuesday is is done. We there. <laughs> and it's it's and sometimes it's a longer journey. And I always I think back now and I think we go through certain things because we're supposed to communicate that story. So like I kept those emails and they are horrible emails, guys. I mean, it's mm. like um when Island Queen was made a Good Morning America buzz pick. Some of my friends were like, you gonna, you gonna send that agent? You gonna send her the book? I said, I said, no. They gotta go Why buy not? it. Wait, wait, say it again, say it again. They gotta go buy it. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> you gotta, the thing is you gotta want it, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta want it. And sometimes these are rejections you get, especially early on is shows you you don't really want it. Mm -hmm. If you don't let one person's opinion stop you, you didn't want it. You really didn't want it. You've got mm -hmm. to say, you know what? I, I might suck right now. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, when I got that, one of the worst ones, I, yeah, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially if you are used to succeeding, you're used to getting good grades, you know, sometimes you might phone it in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That would be the best. Um, and so you've got to dig deep, and you like, I, you know, when I got that, I went back. I took classes. You know, I rewrote that book a hundred and twenty-five times because Whoa. I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer, so it's like, okay, okay, on this iteration, we will work on dialogue. On this iteration, we work on setting. <laughs> on this iteration, <laughs> I iterated right, right. that book. And and work my brain and until I could get the rhythm so I could get it right, so I could improve mm. my storytelling. And I tell everybody, I don't care how many books you have out, uh, every year or every two years, go on a writing retreat, take more classes. You have to keep your skills sharp. You gotta keep keep hungry. You keep mm. if you're not keeping hungry, you're gonna tell the same story over and over and over. It's gonna be boring. Um, mm -hmm. Or you won't have growth or depth in your in your work, and and your readers will know. Readers mm -hmm. will know. They know you. They know your voice. They they know when you the stories and the expectations, and you know you want to keep going. But had I not really wanted it, or just kind of this was something fun to do, you know, because everybody wants to write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediate <laughs> gratification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd have quit. And I'd gone on to do something else. And I wouldn't be in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> As a consultant. <laughs> you know, dude, they're calling me a consulting producer. So Hello. I got a little chair and everything. And what? I credits in this movie. And I think we right. need to have a, like a watch party and stuff like this. Well, the good thing is it's not going to your head. It, no, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like taking like, I'm up to probably like 2,500 photos I've taken. Yeah, that's and what I'm supposed like, to do. She had a one, dude, that's the bad part. We're supposed to do all that. That's about, I cannot share a single image. Well, well, here's the thing, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't put it, put, put, put it to words. But, it's so amazing when I hear your story, like the journey, right, to where you are now. Uh, you mentioned wanting it really bad. Clearly, the things you've accomplished, you've won it really bad. These books you've written, you've wanted to get them written really bad. Uh, there's an uh, author we've had, I'm sure you've, read it, you've heard of his book, um, Black Man in a White Coat. It's about a black doctor, came out of Duke. His name was Dr. Damon Tweedy. Mm -hmm. It's a biography about his journey to becoming a, a, a physician. And he wrote the book, put it out, and the publishers are like, again, this is a black doctor. No, no, what you should be writing about is crime in the inner city. What you should be writing about? And so he's like, why would I? I'm a doctor. 
<laughs> I'm not a police officer. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a social worker. I'm a doc. So it took years, he said, before they finally accepted the content before, you know, what, what he was trying to do. Um, but he wanted it really bad. He persevered and stuck with it. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. So mm-hmm. uh, I do, I do handy stuff around the house, right? I, I built, mm-hmm. you know, built different things. And I look back at things I built 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what in the heck is that? Like, it's like crooked. It just, when you look mm-hmm. back at books you wrote early on compared mm-hmm. to books you write now, mm-hmm. do you see your growth? Oh, and, yeah. And, and yeah. And what's the, what's the one what's the one key area or the key areas where you realize that wow I've really grown in this in this area? Um, I would say boldness is 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 probably I'm a lot bolder. Um, we got this. Remember, let's go back in time. We got this horrible rejection, right? One yeah. of those, they want to put a box on your house and everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and shun the ancestors for you ever picking up a pen and paper, right? Um, at that point, I wanted, I wanted that book that got rejected. I wanted it published. Um, and to get it published, I took out the, I took the color out of the book because I had a theory Mm. writing in this Mm. job, Regency, I needed to take the color out. So the most color I had was Spanish descent Mm. to explain her darker skin. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And but it, it got, got published, published when you did that? Huh? Yeah, so it proved your theory. It proved yeah, your theory. theory got, got published. Um, but it wasn't a story I wanted to tell. It did, what, what's, what's the point? What's the point <laughs> of my experience? What's the point of my origin? What's the point of my, my bloodline to write that type of story? Anybody can write that story. <laughs> and so... The next story, I had, you know, put more color, more color, more color, you know, had had to get a different agent. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> Couldn't sell it uh, and things like that. And actually, actually, I went indie uh, after that. I went indie for books two through 16, two through 16. Um, but How many do you have out now? Hmm? About How many do you have out? 25. 25. Yes. Wow. That's 25 like in race. She has like. 30, I think. So, man. So, when you say indie, do you mean you self-published on Amazon? Yes. Or you just, oh, you... I did. Okay. Um, so, the first book was by Pelican Books. Books 2 through 16 were independently published. So, I published them. So, I uh, I was the, the publisher and I made, you know, distributed through Barnes and & Nobles and Amazon and Apple Books and probably mm-hmm. some other, a whole bunch of other variants and whatnot. Um, and the very first book that I did that with called The Bargain, um, I spent all the, because, you know, bottom line, publishing owes you nothing. People don't realize publishing owes you nothing. Publishing is a business. So if they reject your book idea, it's not saying that's not a good book. It's saying we do not know how to advertise and get mm. this book out here and make money. That's mm. all they're saying. They don't believe there's a significant audience for it. So when you get a rejection from a publisher, that's what that's about. It's a business model. Like if you don't believe the worst thing an uh, an author can do, particularly an author of color, you get a deal because you're so desperate to get a deal. And these people do not market it or don't know how to market it. And then it's a failure. And then it's not their fault. fault. Nobody wanted to read that book. No, you didn't market it right. So... I went indie for books two through set, uh, two through sixteen because I needed to prove there was really a market. Because you know, at some point you start wondering, am I the only one? <laughs> yeah, am I like only yourself. One yeah, just, is there yeah. more people? Yeah, <laughs> 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 I put out there uh, the bargain and this book with, and I spent all the money on editing and a great cover, and this book sold like. A thousand copies in two weeks. People wanted a different story. Uh, People Mm -hmm. love Regency. Black folks, white folks, everybody loves Regency. This this is a magical time frame. That's why Bridgerton is so popular. People like this particular time frame. It's one of the most popular time frames to write about. Um, And people wanted to see a story 
that doesn't involve, uh, that didn't necessarily involve uh, enslavement. They, they wanted to see uh, where we are, uh, we're the center, you mm-hmm. know, of the story and things like that. And it skyrocketed. And so by the time book 16 comes around, these people that didn't, oh, so at a certain point, uh, book first book comes out, I get an agent, they go to all these places, and we get some of the best rejections I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. Not the horrible rejections. These are these are good ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, we love Van- we love Vanessa's story. Does she have anything else? <laughs> um, we love her voice. Does she have anything else? <laughs> we had just one of them was like, we like this, but we don't know how to market it at all. Oh, that's honest. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, that's honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like, it's, like, it's like a breakup letter. Uh, guys would write back in the day. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you go, and so everybody has, when you go indie, sometimes it's to prove that there's really a market. So mm. by 16, I've proven that there's a market, and now traditional publishing starts knocking on that door. Hey, Vanessa, you have a brand you what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you like to publish with us? And I'm like, who are you? Uh. How'd you get my number? Um, <laughs> it's like me. I know, I know, but you I know, and, you know, and you never know what's happening. And I, 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 I toss the series. They pick the series up, and now this is the first time I'm being in. Then uh, NPR is reviewing this. Entertainment Weekly is reviewing this. Washington wow. Post are really reviewing these books, and it's just built and built and built. Um, you gotta want it. And I wanted it. And, you know, and even to make the change from going from indie to now back to traditional, it's because I want distribution. I want a wider platform. I, I wanna mm. I wanna be in stores. It's very hard for indies to indies to be in bookstores. I wanna be in bookstores. I wanted translation deals. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that an agent can bring to you. And wow. now now we have it. Um you know, a Duke the Lady and the Baby um, is one of my most popular titles. It's in Romanian, guys. Romanian, wow. Portuguese, uh, French, UK English, which is different than American English. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's King's English. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. So, speaking about that, um, would you say most of your followers, do you have any followers on the continent of Africa, like from Nigeria, Burkina Faso, or or where do most of your readers come from all over the place or just mostly the U.S.? Or It's it's weird. I have a lot of U.S. Um, I did a book club this year and they were they were in Africa. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. They, you know, so it's 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 different. Um some of you know some folks don't even realize. See, you reached out, right? And I answered my email, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people don't do that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I, when, I saw you, when I saw you in the newspaper, I was like, "Wow, I wonder if she's going to respond." And I just saw there was like a in our Tampa Times Sunday paper. There was I think seven I, to I ten of you. I caught y'all someplace. I I knew your names. Like I knew that uh, your show. I, I probably caught it on Instagram or some snippet someplace. Hello. And I was like, yeah. Well, we made it. We made it. Yeah, we made it. Well, please. I made it. Please, please, We're on please. Instagram. <laughs> well, do this before you leave, Sophie. Mm-hmm. Just download one episode or listen to one because we got geolocations. And Trey and I were looking at the numbers and somebody in, you went to Romania. Someone in Romania is listening to our podcast. And I was like, I was like, I I don't know anyone over there. So please listen to one episode over there so we can tell your friends on the cast. I will. I will do that. I will do that. I will do that. (laughs) Okay. So before we transition, oh, did you have another follow-up? Smiley? No, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate it. So before we transition to the final four here, uh, two quick questions. One is... So I've thought about writing a book about my mother, right? For obvious reasons. We all feel like our mothers are, you know, the greatest, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, what's maybe three tips you'd give me? You've shared a lot. And I think I have a good sense of, you know, it's probably going to get rejected the first time. <laughs> like it gives us to that. But what, what you have any like, like three basic tips I should consider when, when, when writing this book? One of the biggest things is like, you know, where do I start? Well, first of all, how honest are you going to be? Well, I'm not gonna offend the family. Like I'm not gonna, you know, like <laughs> talk about, you know, the, the you know, whatever I, craziness, you know. The craziness. I'm, 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 
And more. Well, how, how honest should I be, Dr. Riley? Um, I never write about my actual family, so I'm very honest, right? Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's easy um, that way. Yeah, as in, and you might want to think about that because, you know, I often know that what I write about might be the first time people are looking in this lens, the first time they're really looking at the Regency or the first time they're looking at Haiti or, or Granada or Dominique or anything, particularly in the, the time frame. So I try to be as historically accurate, as truthful as possible, because this is the first lens that somebody will look at that. Um, number two, the truth is messy. Mm. It's just messy. And that's what people like. People like to read other people's mess. They want to okay. see some some page turning foolishness okay um, okay and it's just because they want to see how people got out of jam that's the kind of mess i'm looking at you know in uh you know they 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 were stuck between doing a or b and and you know mm. both are compelling or both are equally awful and you know how do they survive that you know what did they do how did they make it to the other side that's the kind of stuff that people want to look at okay. but usually that's very messy there's usually okay. some messiness. And so your mama's alive. Thank you for that. She may not want her business in the streets. Facts. Facts. But, yep, you know, true. that street business is always the most interesting. It's the best stuff, isn't it? It's the best stuff. So, so you have to decide what story you want to tell. The biggest thing is, okay. for me, I, I, I look for hidden histories. I look for people who've done things um, and, and came out on the other side. And as we take you, as I take you on a journey, I will show you the messy. I will show you the foolishness. Um, Dorothy made some decisions. I'm like, girl, what the heck were you thinking? Um, and I, I've had, I have friends uh, who would have left these pieces out or, um, you know, wanted you to fudge some stuff. And the thing is, hmm. When you're writing about real people, it's easy to Google. It's easy to figure mm. things out. It's you will have somebody who really does do, do not want you to write or don't want you to write on these subjects. And they'll pick you apart because you left these incredibly important pieces out. Mm -hmm. Because you were trying to save somebody's feelings or trying to make people want you to write, it's particularly when you don't write about black people or people of color, our people want the hero version of these folks. Mm. The mess, that, but it, it, it's mess. The problem is we don't have angels on. Well, we do have some angels on Earth, but we also got some folks that are just you know holding on by a thread. <laughs> <laughs> the guy pitchfork laid down next to him. <laughs> friend would be like, "Don't ask no questions. Just jump in the car. Don't tell no lies." <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Here. You know, right, 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 right. You know, but you've got to decide how honest you want to be. And I'm a fan of as most as as honest as possible, as many facts as you can, and then use your creativity to help the reader understand why they make the decisions they make. Even when you like, there are times where I'm writing about characters I don't even agree with their value system, but I have to honor that character enough that I want to represent them as a whole full individual on the paper. So as you're writing about your mom, she was young. She was full of passion. She was, um, you know, doing incredible things. You know, there's turmoil in her life. How much of that did you want to show? Because those are the things that we lock into, that we relate to as, as readers, as people. Um, and, but those are sometimes very, very personal and that is going to be, that's a problem or that could be, that could, that could be problematic. You got to figure out where you want to do. Makes sense. Yeah. Other thing is, um, on a technical thing, um, I use a program called Aeon Timeline, A-E-O-N Timeline. I put down all the facts of, of a, of a person's life that I'm doing on that timeline. Because, you know, looking at that helps, you know. And at the same time, 
look at the world events or the United States events that your mom has has lived through. Because they were talking about those events. If your mom lived through Kennedy's assassination, they're going to be talking about it. You know, we lived through the Challenger explosion. They talked about it. It was, you know, impacted the day of school that day and, and what happened and all those sorts mm-hmm. of things. Um, those may be important story points or to help you, you know, ground what's going on in your mom's life or parts of your mom's life. So always know what is happening in the world from a political standpoint, from an economic standpoint, um, because those are going to help shape your narrative. Uh, I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. And last thing is, you know, that is the one that everybody hates. <laughs> right every day. Right every day. Every day. Even if it's only 100 words. Every day. Okay. Every day. Okay. Writing okay. is a muscle. You are training your brain to write. And okay. every time you stop writing or put down that paper, you're telling it it is not important. <laughs> and it'll get harder and harder to get back to it. So yeah. write it every day, even if it's just 100 words. Okay. That helps That helps a lot. A lot of what you shared, I, I hadn't even thought about. Uh, so I'm so glad that I asked you. Um, <laughs> I guess the next most important question is, what time and date is the next class? So I'll make sure I'm not late. This class was great. <laughs> yeah, you, have online, you have an online version of this class, so I can make sure. I'm, I like master it. Class. Yeah. A master class. Wait, what can I sign up for the master class, Doctor Riley? Uh, I had hadn't thought about that, but I'm always good for an email. So sit, you always, if you have a question, send an email. It may okay. take a little bit to get back. But I sure. will answer the email now, and it may have a strange timeline, like you know, two a.m. Right. or the morning or something like that. But you know, but yeah. send an email. No problem. No I'm problem. <laughs> and so, um, so for those listening and viewing this podcast, of those that are interested in purchasing your books, following you and your journey as you grow and become, mm-hmm. you know, consultant or director and producer, or whatever you're going to be, whatever's in your future there. How can they, how can they get your books? Where can they go mm-hmm. find your books and kind mm-hmm. of follow you and your, and your journey, what you're doing? Um, my books are available for order everywhere. Um, you know, Amazon is, is big. Barnes and Nobles is big. Um, Apple books, audibles, like m- many of my books are on audio. Um, Adjua Ando has narrated two of the books. Robin Miles has narrated some of my books. Um, I mean, these women, it's like a performance. It's like you went to the theater. I mean, the way they do the parts, the various dialects, because don't ask me how to pronounce stuff that's in my book. They stopped doing it. <laughs> they literally stopped asking me because it was, it was right, horrible. Right. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I'm from I'm Trinidad in South. It, it just don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. But yeah, and uh, sign up for my, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Um, the newsletter people get the first access. So when stuff's going okay. down, they know probably like 24 hours before everybody else knows. Great. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I got, um, you know, this year we had Queen of Exiles come out in July. Um, the second book in the Lady Worthings, uh, Mystery Serial Murder in Drury Lane came out in October. Next year, we've got a brand new romance series called A Gamble at Sunset. Comes in May. Um, And then Murder in Berkeley Square will be coming out in September-ish of next year. Okay. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. And we'll um, link to your your webpage and your books on our podcast episode. Okay, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, the transition question to our final four, what's one thing most people don't know about you Hmm. that you wish they did? Oh, that I wish that I wish that they did. Um, <laughs> that's a very, very that's a different very question. Point. That's a different <laughs> question. Uh, um, hmm. see, that's hard because see, now we're we're living these Instagram lives, so it's like there's a lot of business yeah. out there. Right. Um, I wish I could say what I was working on right now, but that can't do that. Um, uh, let's see. I I I love to cook. Um, ah. I am a I'm a big foodie uh, kind of girl, okay. so I love to okay. cook. 
Um, hmm, I'm kind of I'm a little bit of an open book. That's that's kind of a hard question. Um, because okay. you know I try and live a transparent life. Um, it's it's too hard to keep up pretense. You know, I, you know, yeah. there's some people who are like this is my Instagram life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. grand monier and all you know. <laughs> it's too hard. It's too hard. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. much an open book. Um I okay. you know, I I try to be dedicated. I I, I write every day. Yeah, I'm pretty mm. that, that's pretty I'm boring. That's a boring question for me. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we got some we got some hard ones for you, some exciting right. ones coming. Here, okay. Here's okay. One. The first final four question is if you were to have dinner with anyone alive or dead. Who would you want to have dinner with and why? There's four of you at the dinner table. And for you, because you're around the world, where would you want to have this dinner? And who are the other three representatives at your dinner table and why? Okay. I'd love to have this dinner at Oprah Winfrey's house. Yeah, Oprah. I know she's going to have a mad chef there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know that. I, I'd you love her eating with you? My book would be an Oprah. Win my next book would be an Oprah Winfrey book club pick. So that that's oh man, okay. so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, two so, birds, one stone. Two birds, one. Bird. I, I would love Octavia uh, Octavia Butler uh, to be at the uh, her imagination. Um, just people are still like figuring her work out and and, and mm. just uh, amazing. Um, this uh, we can pull Jane Austen. We can pull Jane Austen into the, into this mix because she's she's you know Regency chick. Um, okay. You know, um, she you know she was so progressive in so many different ways. Um, looking, you know, writing. <coughs> it sounds like odd writing a woman's perspective. She was really writing a woman's perspective um, and their thoughts and concerns in an era where women were, you know, it was men world, men ruled, um, you know, and so that was progressive. And then, you know, like in her very last book, the wealthiest woman in the book is a mulatto woman from the West Indies. Mm -hmm. So she's already, you know, bringing in all these contemporary things and, and bringing in these cultures. So just to her mind work, like, girl, what, how do you get all this? What, like, what, help me this. And, <laughs> mm, right. Let's see. All right, so we've got Octavia Butler, Oprah. We need one more person. Angela, uh, Maya Angela would probably be the last person. Mm. Um, she's just rhythmic. I love her 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 rhymes and just want to hear her just girl do that cage thing rap for me you know right right right, <laughs> right, it, right. it's just so fascinating because i was in la i want to say about a year or two though visiting my brother and um met one of his friends and she actually knew octavia butler went to and i was like she was surprised that I knew uh, of Octavia Butler because I loved her book. Wild Seed and Mind of My Mind are just amazing. And it's just, I mean, the Kindred I hear is on TV now. So I haven't mm. seen the show. It's not good, but the book was amazing. <laughs> the book. And, and when you mentioned Octavia, I just got the chills because she was one of my favorite authors back in the day. And yeah, so thank you for sharing that. Well, no problem. And I, I have not seen the the TV show. I haven't I haven't heard that many people that into it. Um, which may you know I don't know. I have I haven't seen it myself. So I think everybody should check it out just to check it out. Um, but yeah, she's amazing. Yes, yeah. And her more of her stuff needs to be adapted. You know. Yes. Just, yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> second question: What's been your greatest success? Ooh. Well, <laughs> Bulgaria. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have I mentioned that I'm in Bulgaria? Um, <laughs> As an executive producer, <laughs> uh, the greatest success, other than my husband and my daughter, um, I would say it would be bringing Island Queen to life. Um, you know. Uh, the origin story of this particular book 
I told you how I, I had done all this research and was sitting on this research because I didn't think the world of publishing from what I had learned, it was, we could be the best friend, we could be comedic relief. Okay, we'll let you have some historical romances, but a historical fiction solely focused on a black woman um, and have it be an epic journey of this woman going, you know, from that's, you know, men journey. So they, they'll write books about men, you know, going on these, these, these quests kind of book. Cause Dorothy is somewhat, it's a quest book. You never see that. Mm -hmm. I think they want to publish it. Um, and I was going to a conference and you know how y'all go to conferences, right? So you spend yeah. like $400 on registration, right? thousand dollars on the hotel, you right, know you right. won't eat good while you're there. You yep, might have yep. rented a car. And all, all yeah. the <laughs> Adds up. It was $20 to meet with an editor and pitch a book. <laughs> Included. I was mad. And I had a friend who was like, Vanessa, you've spent all this money. And you right. gonna pay twenty dollars? Right, twenty dollars. Right, right. That's a that's a cup of Starbucks coffee. You know, <laughs> in my head. But see, the, the real truth was in my head. I said they're gonna say no. They're gonna uh... say no. I, why am I gonna give you twenty more dollars so you can say no in my face? Mm. Um, and but I went and I pitched, and she bought at the table. Wow. Well, that's the best twenty dollars I spent ever. <laughs> <laughs> Say, bring that twenty dollars. <laughs> wow! Wow! But it's, it's another. We get in our way. We always get in our way sometimes. And if we, you've mm. had some disappointments and some hurts, we carry this luggage with us. And you gotta want it bad enough that mm. you're gonna get over the 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 failings. You get over the rejections and keep pushing. And that's how. Y'all would not be sitting here talking to me if I hadn't spent twenty dollars. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I I'm in sales. I collect mm -hmm. rejections. So I was like, let me just <laughs> all she could do is say no and look at where we are. I was like, what? I said, like, Drake, she responded from the newspaper. You You're the first person. But, 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 not, 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 not to rally <laughs> full disclosure. Full disclosure. Smiley, <laughs> would you have spent the twenty dollars? Talk to me, Smiley. Talk to me, Smiley. <laughs> I'm trying to try to figure it out. I'm trying to try to network and turn my way in. You feel me, though, right? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a party. Hey, please. Can you put it out? So for the final, the third final four question, what is your superpower? There's 7 billion people on the planet. Ooh. What is Google. something that's uniquely you, no one else? I can Google research faster than anybody know to mankind. I can okay. find something y'all think ain't, uh, ain't there. I know are that. You faster okay. than, are you faster than chat GPT? Are you using AI? With, how, is that, how does that affect your writing now with this chat GPT? Can you tell when it's written by an author or an AI? Or what's your comment for, as a professional okay. author with this so, AI stuff? The chat GPT stuff is very, very interesting. Um, if you think it's going to write a book uh, that is good and different and cohesive, at this moment in time, you're fooling yourself, right? But there are people, these mills, I mean, there were, there, there, for, especially in independent publishing, there have been people who've been these book mills, right? Like when you see somebody, you know, who's been writing for two, three years, they got 50 books. Wow. <laughs> So, you know, there, there, there have always been book mills. This new step, uh, you know, they stole for chat GPT to make it smart. They stole a lot of my friends' books. Um, mm. they, they, you know, Jody Pico, Beverly Jenkins, Brenda Jackson, um, just a, you know, a Tom Clancy, you name it. They mm. stole these people's books fed it to this engine to make it smart. So in a couple of years, it's going to get scarier and smarter and things like that. Um, I've used chat GPT for stuff I don't want to do. Hey, come up with a marketing plan for X, Y, and Z. 
<laughs> and it'll spit out some things. Now, some of that stuff is foolishness that may spit out, but it gives you a starting point. Right. Use it for the stuff you don't want to do. Yeah. But writing is you. Writing's your soul. Writing, you know, it's 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 all you. I don't understand how the machine could ever do that. Now, when they become the overlords and take over, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you should it Chat GP should not be writing your books. Use it for the okay. boring stuff that you don't want to use, you don't want to waste your brains on. You, yeah, it's like it's like a tool in the toolbox, right? You can't, exactly. you know, your toolbox cannot build the house. You still have to build mm -hmm. it, but you can use exactly. that tool to get you started. It makes yes. sense. Exactly. Um, so the next question, and, and it's a little odd to ask you, uh, a well-known author, because I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have it at the tip of your tongue, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What's going to be the title of your biography? Hmm. Title of my biography. Um, could be Amazing Grace. Could be, mm. she did that thing. Could I be, like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, could be the many lives of Vanessa Riley. Many um, lives. Many lives of Vanessa Riley. So, so many like things. That. So one of the things. Well, well, Vanessa, I want to tell you, you're you're my first. That I I I, I tell Dre, I, I walk down every. I try to walk five miles every Saturday or Sunday, and I got this routine. I walk down to this JW Marriott. They have a free Sunday paper. I sit there. I read it for thirty minutes. And then I walk another three miles. So two miles down, three miles back. And when I turned, I said, Dre, I saw these authors in the paper. He's like, what you going to do? I said, man, I'm going to reach out. All you can do is say no. And <laughs> so right. I would have That was a you. fun event. That Tampa event was a fun event. I, I, you know I, what? I, and I thought about going. I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to go to St. Pete. Well, it's going to be fun. But you know, when you come back to Tampa, I will go and I will pay the 20 30 $50, whatever it takes to get in the event. So I'll put it, I'll put it in the cyberspace that I will pay for the admittance fee. But I want to thank you so, so much, Vanessa, I for A, you. responding, B, for your authentic self, and B, C, for just being amazing. With you, I thought you were to say, my greatest success outside of your family was making it so when people drive in their Cadillacs, they don't hear all that sounds. I mean, dude, the space shuttle, the NASA, all this other stuff that you right. accomplished is just phenomenal. So thank you, thank you very much for being here. And I am proud of yeah. the Cadillacs too now. I am. I am. You gotta be, right? You gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll just add that to Dr. Raleigh really quickly that. You know, we have a lot of different guests from different backgrounds, different walks of life, which I think is what makes the podcast what it is, you know, in terms of just so unique in that in that respect. What I loved about this interview is that, like, every at every turn, it seemed like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't realize she was doing that, too. And then the, your depth of knowledge and experience um, got me. You saw earlier, I was speechless. I'm like, what do, what do I even, I had like a million thoughts going through my mind at one time. I appreciate you taking taking the time out of, out of your day you guys, while you're there in Bulgaria as the uh, consulting producer <laughs> and having your own chair. I'm looking forward to one seeing the pictures on mm -hmm. Instagram when they're able to be put out, and two mm -hmm. definitely having you back on the show again definitely. to talk more about your experience there uh, as the uh, as the consultant. Because, yeah, I got, I got a spill, and it's 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 amazing. Um, it's going to be fun. And hopefully it will be a film that changes perceptions. Ah. Talk mm -hmm. about a teaser. Dang. He does a little more. Okay. But guys, okay, you guys fair. keep doing what you're doing. Um, you bless authors by giving them a moment in the sun. Uh, it is so very, very important. The, you know, the... It, I don't care if you're indie or if you're with a big house, you still got to get out there and pound the streets and tell people what you're doing. And so opportunities like this are amazing. So thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, I'm going to download that podcast from Bulgaria. So you'll know. <laughs> All right. All right. Love it. All right.